Hello everyone and welcome to our second video in our OK question series and Yusuf, today we have a really special question because this was present in one of the most famous Q banks for the stub and only 29% managed to got it right so are you up for the challenge man? Yeah, let's go so before we start solving uh, we'd recommend that you guys uh, give this a try and uh, resume the video alright, so here we have a 32-year-old man that is brought to the ER after an episode of syncope. He has felt weak and has not eaten much over the last week. As a result, he believes he's dehydrated. The patient is an IV drug user. That seems like an important point. Kind of po points toward um, infective endocarditis. Um, and was hospitalized for aspiration pneumonia three months ago. Again, his temperature is 38.5. Again, points toward infective endocarditis and his blood pressure what do you think of his blood pressure so here's the thing his diastolic is really low yeah. while his systolic is normal yeah that's right so so that, that means his pulse pressure is high right the yeah. difference between systolic and diastolic so that seems like an important clue and look at his pulse that's right yeah definitely and the oral mucosa is dry and dentition is poor an early diastolic murmur is heard at the left sternal border at full expiration now this is one of the most objective statements we have in the question stem so far so to me this is like the most important uh phrase or sentence in the entire stem and usually we start reading the question um like the last line of the question stem right so this is where i would have started and in my opinion this is the most important sentence so far um then we have the lungs are clear mm -hmm. right and the abdomen is soft and non-tender Again, needle marks are seen on the left arm, shows us that he's an IV drug user, and ECG shows a sinus rhythm with two to one second degree AV block. So this basically means that um, after every other P wave, a QRS complex is dropped. Yeah. Right. So. So okay. So let's look at the answer choices. So what do you think of Lyme disease? Okay, if I had only like. Well, 30 seconds left and I only read the very last sentence I'd go like oh AV block so I might actually go and pick Lyme disease yeah. but uh, like that's not like uh, why can't it be Lyme disease all right so first of all he doesn't have the other um, symptoms of Lyme, the, the skin manifestations the the areas that are um, more likely to have um, exposure to um, Lyme disease so I that's how I excluded it I mean there aren't any other symptoms that point toward Lyme disease other than the AV block and, yeah. and the murmur just completely pointed away from the diagnosis um, and the fact that he's an IV drug user as well exactly. so if you pick that pose and try again yeah and um, acute pericarditis so okay the thing about acute peri pericarditis is that um, you'd have a positional chest pain mm -hmm. that improves with uh, leaning forward we didn't have any complaints of chest pain here yeah. we, we just had a murmur and an av block neither one of those is found in acute pericarditis right yeah that's far away yeah so we eliminated those two so far and then we have tricuspid endocarditis this seems like a very good answer choice right it does iv drug user very common on the right side of the heart why yeah. is that the case yeah, because, of course, if you're an IV drug user, you inject um, through your veins and then the veins empty into the right side. Uh -huh. So the, if, you, if you have anything that's infected, usually the tricuspid is the first valve that meets this um, infect uh, infection. And it causes regurg, right? Yeah, and you'd get tricuspid regurgitation. So uh -huh. that's another thing that made me exclude this question because, again, as we said, this sentence over here about the murmur is like the most objective statement and... In tricuspid endocarditis, you'd have tricuspid regurgitation, and yes, it would be, it could be at the left sternal border, or, or it, it would be better if they said um, left lower or lower left sternal border, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the thing here is that this is an early diastolic murmur, yeah. right? In tricuspid endocarditis, what, what's the type of murmur we get? It's holosystolic. Yeah, exactly. So, and also not only that, it this murmur that they're talking about in the stem is heard best at full expiration right oh. but what about the murmur in tricuspid endocarditis oh inspiration yeah exactly because when you inspire and you increase you, you decrease the intrathoracic pressure this sucks up more blood into the right side of the heart so this would increase the uh, right-sided murmurs like uh, tricuspid uh -huh. uh, regurgitation 
that wouldn't be the case in here because okay now this would actually bring me on to the next answer choice so perivalvular abscess now honestly when i looked at this question stem i was like okay this seems like infective endocarditis of the aortic valve right but it's not in the answer choices and when i saw perivalvular abscess i was like okay the they didn't specify which valve yeah so i ended up picking this one because it could be it could mean that it's the aortic valve and the thing about the aortic valve okay look at this picture over here look at this diagram here okay so if you could look at this diagram um you could see that the aortic valve is very close to to the uh, av node or bundle of his right because the the um, AV block that we have here mm -hmm. uh, sounds like it's infranodal um, below the AV node and that would be very close to the um, aortic valve, right? So if you think about it, if you have a perivalvular abscess mm -hmm. of the aortic valve, this would um, not allow the cusps of the aortic valve to close properly, right? Yeah. So you'd get regurgitation, Yeah. right? Yeah. And, and since it's close to since the um um the bundle of his and the avian order are close to the aortic valve what do you think could happen to them oh it, it could block it like it's good like yeah the exactly could, block it could the, spread and block the yeah. conduction so you'd get this it would explain the av block mm. and it would explain the murmur we have and i think those two are the most important statements in the uh, questions and the other things are a bit vague syncope weak iv drug user fever right and, and the blood oh yeah the blood pressure again yeah that's that's also uh, an important point so um when i asked you you pointed out that it's um, the diastolic is low and the systolic is normal and so we have a high pulse pressure yes. right so in aortic regurgitation you get a high pulse pressure right because yeah. during diastole when the when the um, ventricle relaxes blood flows back okay look at this diagram here the valves are not closing properly so blood is going to flow back to the um, ventricle during uh, diastole so, so there is less blood inside the aorta and so the diastolic pressure in the aorta becomes uh, low so the diastolic decreases well the systolic is not affected yeah exactly if anything you could actually in severe cases you could get I I isolated uh, systolic hypertension because the regurgitated blood that comes back into the left ventricle increases the um, preload or the end diastolic volume you have in the left ventricle, okay? And so, um, according to Frank Starling law, the contractility would be greater and the stroke volume of the left ventricle would be greater. So during systole, more blood will be pumped out of the ventricle. And so the systolic blood pressure could actually increase in severe cases, but this was not the case in here, Okay. right? So usually um, in milder cases, you'd have uh, the diastolic pressure uh, would decrease, like in this patient. So this makes perivalvular abscess the correct answer choice. What about mitral valve prolapse? It's excluded for six complacent. Yeah, so mitral valve perforation, what do you think? Where would you have a murmur if it's a mitral valve problem? It, it will probably the location. be the, uh, oh, the, the, over the apex. Apex, yeah. We didn't, have, we didn't hear anything over the apex, right? Yeah. So this is how I excluded it. And if it's a perforation, it would probably cause what? Mitral regurgitation. Yeah, so it would be probably holosystolic. Yeah, so also yeah, right? far away. So, yeah, I think this sums up the important points. Thank and you, everyone. Yeah, and if that was a question on the real deal, it's it, it, like because most yeah. of the students ended up picking like uh, trichos with endocarditis, like 60%. Yeah, more than 60, I think it was like 64, 65% picked uh, yeah. tricuspid endocarditis. So, yeah, sometimes. You, you need to carefully analyze um, certain statements of the question stem. And in, in this question stem, honestly, the, the way I approach this is I try to find the most objective statement they have here. Like, you can't go wrong with an early diastolic murmur. And, oh, an important point here is that diastolic murmurs are usually pathologic, right? Yeah. So if they said, like, you have a one out of six um, systolic murmur, this could be something benign. Like, it's not something that would go like, oh, this is an objective statement, let me, um, let me analyze why we have this murmur. Mm -hmm. But in, in this case, they said diastolic murmur, and diastolic murmurs are always pathologic, right? So you cannot go wrong with this statement. You have to make something out of it, yeah. right? So I think this was the uh, most...
most important th uh, point in uh, this question. So great job, man. What, what a helpful question. And thanks all for thank having you. Let's mm. walk through it. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. See you in another video.